greetings from Bishop Aubrey Shines and G2G Ministries in Tampa, Florida. We pray that you would be blessed and encouraged by the biblical message you are about to hear. Today's classic sermon from Bishop Shines is a bonus sermon and part nine of What Stage of Maturity Are You? with reference to Scripture Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14 in the Amplified Classic Translation. Number 14 is in the Amplified Translation. Come on, let's read it together. Let's read. Concerning this, we have much to say, which is hard to explain, since you have become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. For even though by this time you ought to be teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's word. You have come to need milk, not solid food. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will and purpose, thought and action. Why? For he is a mere infant, not able to talk yet. Last verse, but solid food is for full-grown men, for those whose senses and mental are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or what? Before you take your seat, grab someone by the hand and tell them, praying that you get to stage three. Boy, y'all sound good. I'm going to let you be seated on that. I had shared with you the last time I spoke of this that I contacted a medical buddy of mine who was a doctor and I wanted to, even though his specialty is oncology, I wanted him to kind of give me a real insight as related to what happens to the, the digestive tract, what goes on in the body when a person cannot consume meat, and what are some of the things that he kind of led me here and gave me some help uh, that I could share this with you. And I've given you several of these already, several signs that your body cannot handle strong meat. I base this out of the scripture that if you're going to be, and I'm speaking spiritually now, not just naturally, but if a spiritual person is ever going to be, quote, mature, you're going to have to get accustomed to having what is called strong meat. Please put on the top of your journals, if you don't mind, the need for meat. The need for me. Now, when I spoke to you last about this, I spoke of some of the negative effects as it related to high blood, what happens when you hold food and that sort of thing. I even gave scriptures. I even spoke of the dark circles that come around the eyes. Again, these were natural dynamics that he shared with me that if someone were to come into a medical facility and uh, they were trying to find the problems if these individuals were having these things, they usually can begin to kind of point their finger to an area where their body is not consuming what it needs. Now, again, I'm going to be going in and out of spiritual versus natural. And this is going to challenge you because a lot of us still operate. And if you were not here for stage one, stage two, you really need to get those CDs. The reason being is because if you never grow up, and please hear me, this is not a rebuke. I pray that you receive this as really exhortation when I say this. There are certain things spiritually you will never ascertain until you grow up and you can spiritually handle it. Like a natural person. Those of you that have been parents or, or guardians of any sort, you don't give a child something that a child cannot happen or handle rather. Well, the same premise is true as it relates to people that call on the name of the Lord. There are a lot of people that have been in church for years, but that doesn't make them mature. It just means that they've been in church for years, but they're just not mature. I'm going to say that again. Having your name, having a title does not necessarily, it should, but it doesn't necessarily uh, give the, the mindset or, you know, that, well, he or she has this title, they must be mature. Having a title does not make you mature. Don't forget that. But I said it should, 
but it doesn't. Well, the same thing is true, and I just have to stay here for just a few more seconds. There are certain things that the Father, everybody take your hand and point it towards the heaven. Say, there are certain things my heavenly Father will never allow me to have until I'm able to handle it. Now watch this. Everyone look at Pastor. How many know again? Let me use the same reference. If you have children that are under your care, you may love them, but you're not going to give them everything they think they can handle. Why? Because as an adult, you know they really can't handle it. Anybody ever been there before? There were a whole lot of things I wanted when I was younger growing up that my parents would not let me have. I thought they were wrong. I thought they didn't understand. I thought they were being critical. I thought they were just being too hard. I just thought they didn't understand. I'm living in a different generation. You know, all the same stuff that you probably hear as well. Well, young people, we did the same thing. We thought the same way. I thought I could handle a certain car. They wouldn't buy me a certain car. I wanted a certain car, but they would not get me the car that I wanted. I thought, well, my friends have that car or a car something similar to it. And so I just didn't understand. My father, <laughs> bless his heart, he got me what he thought I needed. I loved something. It was what I needed because even that little piece of car, for me, beat it walking. I, I better come back over here. My northern friends on this side, I think. <clears throat> that car was a beautiful experience. All $75 worth. How old is Pastor Shines? I ain't that old to think that a $75 car was in style. It was not. It was way out of style. A decent car was about, a, I don't know, $1,200, $1,300, whatever it was. And so imagine, he didn't went from what the average should have been about $1,200, $1,400, down to 75 bucks. <laughs> My hoopty was working. I had heat. Hallelujah. No more having to walk. And I began to make money off the hoopty. Because then I would pick up friends for two bucks. I might as well get the best of it. Anyway, but they didn't give me what I was looking for. Now, let me make this spiritual. There are certain things that you and I would never ascertain until we are spiritually ready to handle it. If you don't ever grow up to the stage that God wants you in, desires you to come to, it's not that he doesn't love you, but he loves you so much, he's not going to allow you to walk into something why you're acting like a child because acting like a child is not going to help anyone and whether you know it or not you have a job to do and it's going to require you to grow up would you just touch someone and say I don't care how old or young you are come on tell them God still wants you to grow a little more so I gave you several of those things. I want to give you two that I didn't give you. I even got into the, and I wasn't trying to be funny, but a person, and this is where I left you last, that when there's body odor, and I don't, don't y'all laugh, because some people have it for various reasons, and it has nothing to do with that they don't take a shower. It's sometimes what's on the inside is not processing properly, and as a result of it, there's a manifestation Look at your neighbor and say, I have your own peppy Le Pew moment away from me. All right. I got to go. I got to go. I got to move a little further here. All right. But this is where I want to go. And if you don't mind, let me just take you here. There's another sign. And I want you to write down this word. There's another sign that you are not spiritual in the sense of a stage three person. And the word is called fatigue. Write it down. Please write it down. You're spiritually Fatigue. I, I want to show you a scripture real quick. If you don't mind, turn with me to Galatians. And you need to write this down, the sixth chapter, the ninth verse. Galatians 6, verse number 9. That's Galatians 6. Let's look at it. Pull it up on the screen. Galatians 6, verse number 9. Everyone look at the word of the Lord. This is the spiritual fatigue because you're not eating meat. This Again, if you're right here. It's going to show you you're not maturing people. All right? Let's look at it. And, and let us not lose heart and grow weary and faint in acting nobly and doing right. For in due time, 
And at the appointed season, don't worry, you're going to reap if we do not loosen and relax our, here's the two words I want you to write down. If you lack courage and you faint, please write it down. Let me tell you why that is a sign of a person that is not mature. And, and let me speak first from where God has placed me. This is no uh, me casting any stones at anyone when I say this. Every believer has a job to do. I don't care who you are. What God allows you to walk in is predicated on several points. One, your ability to develop your faith. Well, I just need more faith. No, 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 no. The Bible says, for we have all been given a measure of faith. We've just not all been given the same responsibility. As a matter of fact, what is it? Matthew 25 right there. Jesus gives the parable of the man who was very wealthy, went, goes into a country. And the Bible says that man, according to Jesus, he gave people, here's the key word, according to their several ability. He didn't give them all the same thing. It was not a sense of socialism. It was not equal. To one was five, to another two, and then to another one. He seemed to applaud strongly, that is, Jesus in telling the story, the man that had the five and did very well with them. And he did the same, in all fairness, to the man that had two. But notice what the man that, even though he had something, he didn't do anything with what he had. He began to use excuses. Please write this first thing down. One of the signs that you are fainting is when you don't have courage to say what God has given you to say. As a leader, one of the things that hurt me, if you, I hope you all don't mind me being this transparent, God help you. Well, a pastor is just a person. Well, if I'm transparent and then you make a bad judgment, it makes it a little more difficult at times to share. So just bear with me. One of the things that hurts me so much and I do, I, I wept over this. It seems like God always has to come back and bring a balm and Gilead. Maybe I'll preach that, what that really means one day. There has to be a healing process that I go through. Because as a leader, one of the things that I pay attention to is those that have been given what is called a spiritual mantle to lead. When I see leaders, especially here in America, that are afraid to address issues that are just devastating this country, it just does something to me. As a leader, it bothers me because I've identified the, the, the real issue, and that issue is they lack courage. Because courage will, will, will present itself to you in places and in arenas that is not necessarily comfortable in. In other words, when God is going to raise you in a place of courage, I want y'all to hear this. This is not just about people that pastor and bishop. When I say this, I'm speaking to you individually. When you lack courage to say what God is saying about any specific issue, you're not at stage three because you have fainted in the sense you are too concerned about your reputation how people are going to view you, whether or not they're really going to like you, whether or not you're going to be invited into the in crowd. I'm convinced this is one of the reasons why a lot of Christians have activities to feel their emotional well-being because they're not doing spiritually what God had really called them to do. So it's easier to get involved in organizations and do stuff to make a sense and feel and have a sense of value. But what God had really called us to do, please hear Pastor Sard, what he's really called us to do is change the culture. And if you don't see yourself as a man or woman that's changing the culture, then you have fainted. You become weak. You're not walking in courage. I'm going to say this. I've said this the other way. Bear with me. When I see leaders, I'm talking about leaders that have the, the megaphone, and I'm prophesying. This is not out of anger when I say this, but God spoke this to me. I'll never forget. I have it written down. I'll tell you how many, a few years ago. 
There is a time that, hear this, this is so prophetic. There's a shifting that is soon to happen. That those have held the mantle for decades. <clears throat> You're going to see them go right off the scene. I didn't say they were going to necessarily die. There's going to be a, a, this paradigm. This thing is going to happen. Why? Because the earth is, according to Romans, the earth is crying out for deliverance, for help, for a leader to stand up for God's sake and say something about what's going on without fear that they may be persecuted. Can I give you a prophetic insight? One of the reasons we're seeing a persecution is because there is a lack of, of leaders that are willing to say, well, pastor, that's over there. No, we're a body. And a body is not divided over there versus over here. If you're sensitive, you'll sense the hurt and the pain. So what and when we see persecution going on somewhere else, please hear me, that is a sign that something is already knocking at our door here, but we are not addressing it. And God is not going to allow that group to take all the punishment and we just skate by because we are in America. If you believe that, you don't understand nothing about prophetic things. And so uh, the Lord showed me that there's a shifting that's going on. That there's, a, there's a, another group of leaders that are being raised that would be so just courageous that they're not going to take down simply because they're not invited to speak at the next conference where they can be recognized and applauded by their own. God is raising up a whole nother group. And I prophesy he's raising up a group right here in this local church. I am so looking forward to decreasing as this next generation begins to increase. I just want to be a cheerleader. Not worrying about having the title. I just want to see some of our young men and women say, you know what? I'm willing to take on what's going on and really address. Do you know, can I just give you a little insight here? Do you know, and I've done the study on this, people. There is not one major leader today that you are watching on television that are even addressing the issues that are going on when we have all of these demonic activities that are just decimating our children they're silent it's an accepted belief now that you can kill a child after it's been born no leaders are talking about it and those that do they're silently talking about it they're whispering in their own churches it's amazing they don't have a problem going to social media when they want to invite you to their conferences they don't have a problem going to social media when they're talking about the next great song that's coming out or the next great group or their men's conference or ladies conference, but they're silent on infanticide. They're silent when we are now living in an age that you can lose your job if you don't address a biological male by the pronouns to be called that day we shouldn't talk about this pastor because we want to seem as we're loving and caring I can love you enough to just be honest with you listen we don't have to be belligerent we don't have to be people that that, that we're pointing out for. you're going to hell you're going to hell with loving kindness these people are hurting <laughs> when I was in Chicago, in Northbrook, the other day, one of the relatives I've never met, I knew they followed me. You know, it is what it is. But I'm not backing down just because I look like you and I come from you. And they says, well, and they kind of, you know, how people do, they kind of navigate themselves into a conversation. They want to debate, but they really don't. They want to argue, they don't. They want to make their point, but they don't want you to make a point. You know how some of the people that you know, they want, they want to talk, but they don't want you to talk. It's like a relationship. But when it's your turn, 
I ain't listening. It's almost like they put their fingers in their ears and go, no, 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 I can't hear you. And so it, it, somebody said, thank you, girl, we get stage, it's just stage one. And one of them said something, and I can't remember how she framed it. And she, oh, I know what it was. She was celebrating one of her coworkers that were transitioning. And I said, oh, now how many know me a little bit? <laughs> Deacon... <laughs> Deacon Alfred, are you praying for me, sir? You're looking sharp, man. So she says to me, you know, yes, I was, and, and told me the background, and, and my, my coworker, and we're having a big party because my coworker is transitioning. And everyone was, you know, was like, oh. And I could tell those who didn't even agree with her, said, oh. Because people that just want to be politically correct. <laughs> and so when it was my turn, because everyone was, kind of, you know, even though they didn't say your turn, you respond, you respond. Everyone was kind of indirectly going around the table and they were giving their response. And so when I felt it was my turn, it's my turn. See what I can be. I'm sorry. And so when it was my turn, I said, now, exactly what are they transitioning to? back over here y'all were my friends just two minutes ago you left me you forsaken me I know how Jesus felt now I said so what are they transitioning and and so I pastor that's not right well wait a minute wait wait how many know that Jesus knew everything how many know he yet asked questions to Yo, oh, y'all my friends again Yes, he asked questions even though he knew the answer. Who do men say that I am Jesus? How many know Jesus already knew what the boys was going to say? I already, I, so I just take it from Jesus. <laughs> and so I said, well, this is what they're transitioning. Uh, he's going through and blah, blah, blah. And he's, he's what's going to be his new name. I said, it's interesting. I said, so tell me. I said, and forgive me, I'm, I'm not that bright as it relates to medical issues. Because that's my approach. Because I, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to start anything. But you open up the door, I'm walking in. I says, now, have they found a medical way to change the chromosomes? I, I don't know. It, are you telling me now that that man will now be able to produce a child? Did, have they come to that? And she sat there with her educated self. Well, no, no, no. I, little, 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 little. I said, oh, I get it, I get it. So if I decide today, and I looked at, one of the cousins who's probably in her 80s looks fantastic. I said, so if I decided today I wanted to be cousin and I named her name, I said, I have a right to do that, right? Because after all, I'm, I'm, I'm tall, I'm white, I'm thin, I'm 82. I'm standing right here. This is safety, Dr. Harris. Yeah. We don't have leaders. But pastor, that's just a personal position. No, it impacts your jobs. We're working with a group right now in Virginia. A man lost his job as a teacher simply because a young man came in one day, had transitioned in his mind that he was no longer biologically what he was born into. And because the teacher refused to call him her, they fired him. So what you're asking us to do it's not only just to be confused, but to join you in your, your, your delusion. I'm going to pretend. And now you mad that I'm not pretending with you. But yet, we don't have pastors that are willing to say, hey, enough is enough with this stuff. Parents, listen to me. Please hear me. If you don't give your children this understanding, you're going to raise a generation of immature believers that they will be trampled on because they didn't become the light and the salt of this earth. Tell your neighbor we can do better than it and we're going to. Come on. Let's go back to the scripture. So we're lacking courage. People are not willing to be courageous to say what they believe. And, and watch this. I'm talking to believers right now. You know what they hide under? The scripture. Here's some of the scriptures. Just take one of these down. 
please. I'm not called to argue. That's what Christians are saying. Yet the Bible says, contend for the faith that was once delivered. Oh, I got to go here because some of you think that you're spiritual and you're not. Look at your pastor. Don't be angry when I ask you this question. If the majority of your friends are non-believers and you get along better with them than you do with the household of faith, you are not in stage three. You are a Christian that is infant in your thinking because there's little that you really have in common with them unless you are common with them and they don't see a difference. Preach in here, Bishop. If you cannot distinguish the two, it is a sign you're operating in a very weak state. I got to go back to the premise of my argument. Listen, this is why some of you cannot break through with the things you're looking for. Listen, please hear me. This is going to be a little difficult. I promise I'll heal you in just about five minutes. Some of the things that you're looking for God to pour out upon your life, the blessings, the favor, that you can walk in the supernatural abundant, it's not happening. Let me tell you why. Because God has placed you on those jobs and you were silent. Why would he promote you on the same job you have no voice in? So you lose your jobs. And then you blame Satan. You know, Satan got in my manager. No. I don't think so. See, I believe that we have a responsibility that forces us to be courageous. Oh, I didn't say go to your job and make it your pulpit. You go to your job. You need to work. If you work in eight to ten hours, work eight to ten hours. But you do have a lunch break. You, you do have downtime. Y'all, everybody uses I, uh, some sort of instant message. You instant message everything else. <laughs> I didn't say not do your job. I don't believe in that. I believe you go to work, you work. You give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. You there, you labor. You give that employee. As a matter of fact, don't even, the believers should be the number one producer in, in, in all of, every believer. Listen, if you work at any job, you should be number one. Because what you're doing, you're not doing it to get a promotion from them. You're, you're working as unto the Lord. I'm quoting the scripture, knowing he, if you are always trying to scam the country, the company you're working for, you, man, you ain't in no stage three. I don't know what stage you in. You stage rip off. <laughs> you are a thief. You ripping that country, that company off. I'm just there getting a paycheck. They don't. Oh God, I better move on here. I got, I'm trying to help some of you grow up because these type of things. Listen, see, it's easy to just put together something and sound great while you're preaching, but I need you to hear the heart of the Lord. On this issue and sometimes hearing the heart of the Lord is a challenge have you ever been in a place God began to deal with you about some things and you saw some ugly stuff but what you saw ugly wasn't in somebody else but it was in you can I can I question you have you ever wept and cried over some things that God have ever shown you about you forget about your neighbor forget about your husband and your wife I've been praying that God would just kill him I mean use him use him Lord use him no, no, no. Have you ever seen some things in you? You need to die. Moms, dads, instead of always blaming the kids, have you ever seen anything in you that you got? You know what? I'm sorry. I, as a father, mother, I've not done this thing right. I missed some things along the way. I had attitudes I shouldn't. See, it's, it's not about Satan, people. This is about the will of God working in your life. I got to go a little further. I, I don't want to stay here too long. But again, one of the signs that you can't handle this stage three meet is that you're weary. The weariness that Galatians speaks of is that you have lost courage. Again, if the majority of your friends that you're comfortable with, they got this pseudo God. I call it God light. You know, all you beer drinkers out there? <laughs> 
Over here, over here. You know, y'all don't drink the real stuff. Y'all drink the light stuff. I, I don't, it's, I'm losing calories. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dr. Gans. Dr. Gans ain't praying hard enough for me. Some of us have God light. We don't want the full brew. It's just too much to handle. See, when you're dealing with God light, you'll never let him deal with you because you're not willing to own the weight you're putting on. To drink the full thing, you're going to put on extra calories. You're trying to watch the weight. I'm speaking spiritually because you don't want to be too heavy. Can you turn to Romans 12 and 3? I gave this to you before, but I want to go back over this. Just two other scriptures I want to give you. This is real quick because it's dealt with pride and so many of you questioned me about this. Not in a negative way, but your response was so overwhelming. I thought I better bring this back up again. Because if, if, if the dozen or so or more actually that wrote me on this, I, I thought maybe I better say this. Romans 12 and 3. Because this is another sign that you eating meat is not working for you. There's something called what I deemed at least and uh, Doc told me was... He says, you can see the symptoms of a person that's not digesting when they're always bloated. Romans 12 and 3, you can see it right there. Go to it real quick. Let's just look at it. Watch this. For by the grace, which is, by the way, is favor that you didn't earn. It's just unmerited. Unmerited favor of God given to me. This is Paul speaking. He says, I warn everyone among you not to estimate... And think of himself more highly than he ought. Not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance. Are you so special that you think you're special but you're not? My Lord, my Lord. Do you think you're that wonderful? That if you don't do it, it just won't get done? You think if you don't give, the church ain't going to never get a building because I'm holding back my tithe? please. God will blow that low stuff so quick. Make your head spin. Watch this. Come on. More highly than you ought to. And you have an exaggerated opinion of your own importance. But to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith appropriated by God to him. I'll stop right there on verse 3. There's a bloating that I call, please write it down, it's called false pride. Please write that down. That means you believe in something that really you need to kind of divorce yourself from. I've heard this argument so often across this country, actually, more so than here, where people would say things like this. It's just not for me any longer. I'm not talking about them leaving God, but they'll leave a ministry. Because their time is up. That's pride. Ask them what they're doing. Well, I'm going to go do what the Lord said. Well, what did he say? <clears throat> I'm just open. <laughs> I'm open to do what he said. Now watch this. I'm open to go do what he said, but I'm leaving. Okay, y'all just missed that moment. You don't know where he's leading you, but he did say it's time to leave here. And then they have the unmitigated audacity to use Abraham. You know, because the Bible says that Abraham went into a country he knew not of. Well, until you become the patriarch. Until you become 90 and 100 years of age and have children way past that time in life. Don't talk to me in the name of Abraham. Let's talk about Jesus. This is a false pride, listen, that is permeating America. And I have pastor friends that tell me this stuff all the time. They say, and they ask me. They say, pastor, they call me, you know, prophet, has this happened? I say, yeah, man, I experienced that. What do you do? I said, nothing. Well, you don't get up and say anything? I said, man, please. I'm not wasting my time with that stupid stuff. I said, I've already put it out to the congregation. If a person leaves here and we don't lay hands and send them out, just know they didn't leave right. 
I ain't got nothing else to say. That's my story, and I'm sticking with it. Pride says, pride says, I'm more valuable than what you're doing. I know more than these women and men that have spent decades serving the Lord. I have a revelation that's so powerful that God is going to use me. My, follow them. Hear me. Follow their behavior. Pay attention to those that say things like that. Look at them if God lets them live several years from now. They're still going from pillar to post. They're still hopping like little bunny rabbits because they can never get satisfied. Why? They're filled with pride. A sign that you're not spiritually mature is when you're easily moved by your own ambition. A sign that God is not, listen, hear me, please hear me. A sign that God is not using you is when you believe that he's using you, but you have no fruit to back it up. God move you. You have nothing to show for it. I always have challenged people, not in an argumentative way, but when I've heard this argument, I said, well, let's go back to the scripture. Let's find out how much, because I'm all, I, I just kind of stay from a biblical perspective. Show me the fruit that you have produced while you've been here. Show me the souls that have followed you. Show me the men and women that you've led to the Lord and in and, and, and the words of John and their fruit yet abideth. Show me the people that have been so impacted by your Christian walk that they are now the better for it and you done changed several generations and they're still planted in the church. If you have no fruit like that, you are operating in pride when you think it's all about you. Because if you're not producing, listen, go back and read John yourself. Jesus is the one who said this. He said, ask the Father anything in my name and I will do it. Don't just sit, don't start and stop there. Go back and read the prior verses. He was talking about people that produce fruit. He was talking about people that had a substantial life and that they were doing a work in the kingdom. Then he gets down to the verse. He says, now you can ask anything in my name and now I'm going to do it for you. All the promises are predicated upon you being responsible. When you're not responsible, please hear pastor, please hear this prophetically. I'm trying to help some of you grow up. I know this is difficult. You will never reach that next level in God until you are able to produce something. Imagine yourself being an employer. I'll take you here mentally. And you have an employee, he or she, and they're not producing. What happens to them? They get, what happens to them? They get fired. I'm glad God is not those people. God will keep us. But we're not producing anything. You know where we get fired from? What's called spiritual promotion. Some of the biggest doors, Larry, that has ever happened in my life was because I chose to say some things that other young evangelists wouldn't say. I did not do that intentionally. That thing was in my spiritual DNA for whatever the reason. And I would say things that would just go totally against the grain. And man, that thing cost me friendships. That thing cost me relationships. That thing cost me family connections. It cost me life. But in the middle of the night, I could sleep well. Because I know I'd done what the Lord had called me to do. At the peril, at the expense of losing things. Hear me. If you're not willing to lose something, please hear me. You're still operating in pride. Because anytime you got to hold on to something to make you bigger, I hope y'all saw the symbolism there. See, anything that you look at, Pastor, anything that you hold on and it swells kind of sounds like leaven, doesn't it? It means that you're swelling with you. Jesus said, You want a lot, then let go of what you have. He says, I'll add to you. There were things that I had to say that what I'm not saying I was the only one I wasn't that's be silly and arrogance on my part. But there were few of us that were saying things that were quote mainstream. And I have to be honest it didn't seem like I was going anywhere fast because it just kept isolating me. And you know what it does it makes you have what's called alone time. Can I help you get rid of pride please write this down you got to be willing to live with you. 
No, no, I didn't say with somebody. I said you got to be willing to deal with you, your own emotion, your own issues. You got to be willing when Friday night comes and everybody's hanging out and making their calls to get together. You got to be comfortable knowing you probably won't get a call. I, I know that's rough. I want to go. I want to be a part of it. Why didn't y'all call me? Mm -hmm. And then y'all go to this divide and conquer and you got to get that girlfriend to be your girlfriend and that boyfriend to be your boyfriend because you got to get in blah, 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 and it's just a mess. <laughs> See, when you're growing up, you got to learn that it's not just about hanging out with the folk unless those folk want to hang out with the God that you're serving. And I got some good news. God won't just let you be alone. He's always going to give you a remnant of people to say, you know what? We're not better than anybody, but we really want to do the will of God. And we want to do the will of God so much, we're willing to let a group grow. I'm not talking about having the superficial pride where you think your group is better than the next group. I don't believe in this group stuff. I don't even believe in group think. I wrote a major article for Real Clear Politics talking about group thing. I don't believe in that syndrome. I just don't believe. I believe that the uniqueness of God is so powerful that he can work through you, but he can connect other people to you, and then you have the same mind. I'm so glad that Jesus sent the men out two by two. Because had he not done it, I know the way I think, I would have thought, well, I'd go by myself. And the Lord don't want us to listen. Listen to pastor. The Lord don't want you to do this by yourself. You become isolated, you become an easy target. It's better to have two than one. Solomon said a threefold cord is not easily broken. That's simply, listen, if we can hang out, would y'all do me a little exercise? Would you grab someone under the arm that you're sitting next to? Tell them if we stay connected, it's hard for the enemy to take you down without taking me down. Come on, look at the other person. Tell them it's hard for the enemy to take all three of us down. Tell them he may target you, but tell them I got gotcha. you. Look at pastor, I got to close. I want to say this to you. Me teaching like this on a Sunday morning, listen, look at pastor. This is deep heart, confrontational, sober. Man, I can, I, I don't say this with arrogance, but I've been doing this for a few decades. I know how to intentionally go in and excite a crowd. I, I, I give God glory. I'm gifted. I can call a man or woman out and begin to tell what their name is. I never met them. I'm on record for this. I can prophesy to win because that coat, that cloak, that mantle is on me. So when I walk in, I'm hearing the voice of the Lord. I'm seeing what I see. But now as a pastor, sometimes I have to wait a minute and then take these moments and say, wait, well, I know you want me to prophesy. So many of you have seen me do say. I want to be in one of them services where he's calling folk out. Listen, if I need to call you out by your name, you don't just need a service. You need some psychiatric help. If you don't know what your name is by now, you need me to call you out? For yea, I say, thy name is Gardenia, and yes, there shall be a McDonald's. <gasps> he called my name. If you need me to do that, you're missing the point, man. When I start pretending like I'm one of those kind of preachers, notice y'all emotions. Like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Y'all go back to that old Baptist way. If I do it too long, uh, uh, Sister Brenda over there shout and just fall right out. I've seen her. <laughs> Don't let me play with that too much. <laughs> well, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> But then you don't grow. I'm trying to grow you. Can I give you this last thing out of this? This is powerful, people. When you cannot, listen, this ain't about Aubrey Shines when I say this. Look at Pastor. I got to finish right here. Part of maturing is knowing what you're connected to. Please write that down. Part of maturing is knowing what you're connected to. Can I use someone for just a moment? Elder Todd, stand up, sir, if you don't mind. Come up here with me, if you don't mind. If I'm mature, and this, this is, everyone point towards pastors, say this is not about Aubrey Shines. People, I'm about to teach you a principle. As a matter of fact, write this down. It's never about person. 
it's always about a principle. That's really the last thing I have to teach on this. I can't do it today. Everything that we do as believers is never about a person. It's always about a principle. If you get caught into personality, you're going to miss the bigger principle. Why? Why do you say that, Pastor? Because God will use people that you don't think are personally worthy to be used. God will use, God will use the wrong person in your mind. They don't talk right. They don't look right. They don't smell. God, I can't follow them. They, they, they don't even know how to. God will use that person that you do all that stuff against. But if you operate based on personality and not principle, listen, you're in a different stage and it's not three. Let me go back to my example. If I'm following Elder Todd Roman, and, and, and I'm going to use someone. I'm going to need your help, Ken, here in just a moment. Just come, sir, and just stand. Ken, you're looking sharp. All right, here we go. Now, this is just for play, folk. I don't want y'all. I, I have to do this. <laughs> Manny, because I've had people, and I do examples like this. I've literally had people in this ministry. I'll never say who you are, but they will write me. I, you know, I felt in the spirit what you were saying was that that, was, that man is your enemy, and I could catch it in the spirit. Sh shut up. <laughs> you didn't catch anything. These are just examples, and I don't want y'all writing me telling you, I knew Kenneth was against you. I knew it. I can tell the way he wear his tie. Stop, people. Please, don't write me. I'll write back nice because <laughs> I'm in stage three. Anyway, here we go. If I'm following elder, and elder is the set man, now, again, my name is not the issue. I'm talking principal people, and I'm talking about stage three dealing with maturity here. Please hear Pastor's heart. If this man is used of God to do what he does, but this man doesn't like it for whatever his reason is. I'm not here to even argue that. He don't like his style. He don't like his shirt. He don't whatever. He thinks that he should do it better. He should use different people. Just give whatever example you want to give. Now, watch this. He gets so upset that he leaves this man. Go take your seat, minister. But he don't just leave. What I want you to do, sit on the end. And I want you to pretend you're whispering to the lady to your right about all the negative things about this man. You got to be careful, though. Be careful. That's his wife. <laughs> and he's been in the army, and he shoots. He's got real guns for real. <laughs> Now, be careful. Come on, just pretend. Don't get too close to Ebony. Fine. And Deacon is trying to get his kiss on later anyways. But you got to work with this. Come on, man. You can do this. Charles, pray for that boy back there. All right, here we go. <laughs> if he leaves this man, because he's no longer, y'all need to catch this, because so many of you are falling victim to this. Listen, you're never going to grow up spiritually because you're basing it on a personality and you're not dealing with the principle. If this man, le I'm going to ask y'all a question. If this man leaves this man, and now he's got a lot of negative to say about this man. Can I ask you a question? How are you all still close to that man? Jerry, am I talking? Elder, come up here. Stay right where you are, Ken. What's a handsome man coming up here, ain't he? Look at Sinead. She got excited when her husband stand. That's my husband. <laughs> Big, strong looking. I used to have muscles like that in my mind. I, I did. They were there. I know they were there. I just, I can't remember where I put my thoughts. <laughs> Come up here, elder, sir. This man has been faithful to serving you. This man has left no good cause other than he's got issues. And he's now going throughout the sanctuary talking to other folk. I'm talking stage three people. This is not about Aubrey Shines. Get your minds off of me. I'm trying to help you grow up with you. Deal with this thing. Because if you don't deal with this, listen. You cannot break through when you don't get these principles. Because what you've done, you've opened up a door for the enemy to come into your home and keep your own home jacked up. This is why some of you can't get breakthroughs with your finance, with your children, whatever it is, because you're not addressing this stuff. So why is it 
that this man can keep going around talking all the stupid stuff he's talking about this man. But these men are still following this man. Watch this. But y'all still are loyal to this man. How do you do that? Can I, thank you, brother. Can I suggest something to you? I have three minutes. Can I suggest something to you? You can't. I didn't say you couldn't. Thanks, Ken. I didn't say you couldn't befriend this man. But the moment this man begins to talk to her or him or him or them or whatever, you just say, hey, hey, hey. That's the older tot you're talking about. That's my man. I, I, maybe y'all are different. I'm trying to help you. This ain't about Aubrey Shines. I'm trying to show you a principle that is much deeper than me. I could be dead today. It's irrelevant. Here's what is relevant. Your lack of principle as it relates to what you're loyal to is a sign that you're maturing. Well, I do agree with Minister Ken that Elder Todd does. does, does. Can I suggest something to you? And I'm cl close your Bibles. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Maybe you all were raised different. I don't know. <sighs> Maybe it was just a few of us. Have any of you ever fought with your siblings? I have. I, had, I did. I shouldn't have. I don't know if you were raised in the house I was raised in, but if my mom, or oh God, my father found out, ooh, not good, not good. We would fight among ourselves. But I would never let you fight my brother. I don't care how wrong that right. And I fight him and whip. Oh, I could get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. I could get him, boy. I'd pin him down and wear him out. But you ain't going to pin him down and wear him out. Listen, when you don't get this kind of principle, you're not maturing. Never allow yourself to become part of anything that impacts. See, I used Elder Todd and Jerry and Minister Ken because they're mature enough to handle this. But what happens when you say something about Dr. Gans? What about Elder G? What about Dr. Beckman? See, if you don't protect one, you don't protect any. If you let anybody go off on one, you're letting everybody go off on all. Spiritual maturity must be reflected, listen, last point, in how you protect one another. I'm done. I'll say it again. Spiritual maturity must be reflected of how do you protect one another. I may know as a pastor a whole lot of jacked up stuff about a whole lot of folk, starting with me. But I'm not going to let anybody on the south side deal with you. Because if they deal with you, they deal with me. What would happen as a family if we had that same mind right here? Would, would you help me do something? Would everyone stand? I'm closed. I'm done. I'm finished. I need your imagination for just a moment, please. Just your imagination. But would you grab two to three people by the hand? Just make some quick circles in here, please. Just some quick circles. Please. Now, this may not be the group that you always hang around, but I need you to pretend this is the group that you hang around. Hey, Mitch, I'm really happy for you, man, that you... Mitch just got another degree. How many degrees, man, do you have? I'm just curious. Two? He, and he said it so modestly. Oh, just two, Pastor. Mitch just got another degree in something. I can't even remember. Mitch, we happy. We love you. I'm glad you're here. I really mean that. Sports? Sports management? Am I right? Sports management. Good job. If I become an athlete, I want you to manage me. I have the potential, Mitch. I can do it. I can do it. I can beat them all. The hands that you're holding may not be the group that you hang around, but I do want you to be a brother or sister to them in love. Would you look at him or her? Some of y'all won't even look at him. Lord Jesus, y'all got some real pent-up issues. Tell them I love you enough. 
even in your absence, when you are not physically present in my circle, that even though you may be, say I'm just saying, a little bit or a lot touched in some areas of your life, I recognize it. Because when I look at you, I know you recognize in me the areas I'm touched in. So as a brother or sister, I bow to you. While you and I may not always see eye to eye, I will never allow anyone under any circumstance to have a ill word, an unpleasant word, to say about you when you're absent. Say, I will defend you whether you're there or not. And I only ask you follow the same spiritual motto and you defend me when I'm not there. Tell that person before you let that hand go, if we do this together, we will grow up together and God will be glorified. Now tell them if you believe what you held my hand and said, then let my hand go and lift your hands with me. Come on. And let's give God some real glory. Come on. We hope this message has been a blessing in your life. To hear more inspiring, transformative messages, visit glorytoglory.org and make sure you follow and like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.